Hey everybody, you can see you back once again. Yeah, we got the old parts cleaning clothes on because we've been doing a lot of preparation to round out this whole tri-build series, at least um, get it to the point where we're not working on three engines. We can finally shelve the two we don't need for 1113 and just be able to do just everything once through for a change. Yeah, it's uh, doing everything three times does get a little bit old after a while. But anyway, so just to give you a quick catch up on where we are, McMaster car sent a package the other day where we had our shim stock in there we needed for that front cover and a few other good things so i was able to get the in play figured out on the crankshaft here you can see the metal shim beneath that gasket we'll cover all that in the next episode so that cover's ready to go on wrap that up and then rounding out the other two for trying to get cylinder heads and front covers and everything on so yeah, back here you can see we got front cover cleaned up for this one. We got the paper gaskets made, idler gear ready. We have head gaskets back there. Again, front cover, paper gaskets, idler, head gaskets. Same here for that. All three of those bases are covered. And then just the hours I've got into getting all the hardware squared away. We have like 14 cylinder head studs for each engine, 14 cylinder head nuts. We also have nine quarter inch bolts for each front cover times three. You're going through a whole lot of that and I'll tell you guys right now what goes on up in here the average person wouldn't be able to cope with it on a daily basis I tell you it's hard being me but you all talk about liking details that's where I OCD is a heck of a thing let me tell you so this is the first gen block that old 4b666 and it has first generation hardware accordingly so you'll notice on the cylinder head studs the fine thread end up here is not threaded down as far as they are on the studs for that newer 5F block or the studs for this newer 5F block that's because that's we're keeping hardware where it needs to be to match everything right down down to the quarter inch bolts we have the I don't know if you can see it these are the earlier style that have the circle with the CLN in the middle on the head that is your 1934 to 1947 circa round in there standard hardware head whereas these are no circle but they just have the cln that is the 47 on through late 50s anyhow so yeah we spent a lot of time digging to make sure even the markings on the bolt heads were appropriate for the casting numbers on the blocks we'll just leave it at that i the things i do right so and then cylinder heads we have a pair figured out for this block we have a pair figured out for this block but yeah, I figured this is the perfect time to come over here and show you some of the things you see with some of these. It's uh, it's unbelievable. I'm trying to get a third pair figured out and I was going to use this pair right here. They even had matching petcocks, which is rare. But then in this one, I believe, or was it? No, it is this one. You can see all the way through here, it's got a big old crack that goes right through there into the combustion chamber into the water jacket so i've got this head is good so i need to find one to replace that one with so far the one in the bench is the front runner but as i was taking the petcock out of it it well that's why i decided might as well make a little bit of a video about it just the wide range of different styles of these that you find because this was an item that wore out quite often and it's very rare for me to pull down a d2 pony that has a matching set of petcocks in it so yeah this one's kind of round body design it doesn't have a hex at the base which is kind of odd so you can only get it so tight but that's what was in there let's set it down here um we have then like this is another style where we don't have quite the flare that this one does but again no hex and round body but a little bit different wing at the top this is actually one that came out of 1113 and this is not cat factory but i love the spout on this thing i would love to have another one just like this and throw that pair on 1113 we have it's not the wing style top but it's a lever style on it and that's um that's perfect just for a gas drain on the cylinder head um i'd love to have another one i only got the one so i did scrounge out a matching pair there so between those two and those two we do have two good sets anyhow but just some of the disarray that you find with these this one well this cylinder head has been welded pretty good in fact i think we have some brazing there and we have some nickel weld there i'm not quite sure but yeah that one had uh, blasted out pretty good on the front at one point but we have it looks like uh not really, really a feral fitting style on there, but it's not a petcock at all. I'm not sure. There's no way to seal it up. I'm not sure if there was something else on there at one time, but that's gone. Um, this one has a looks like a three eighths coarse thread bolt, just 
burn down into the eighth inch pipe threads that held the petcock at one time. Then this one has the remnants of a broken off petcock in there, and then they just jammed a sheet metal screw in the middle of that just to seal it up. You see all kinds. Um, yeah, just disarray. And you'll notice too, cleaning these cylinder heads, all of the rust debris that comes out of these things, like this one's, you, know, you, you can see it in there. It's just, uh, the chunks are so big you can't even shake them out. But yeah, they're notorious for getting clogged up because this is kind of a restriction zone in here. So that's water port, water port, those are water ports. And then that little hole right there is also a water port, but they really jam up with stuff. So you really have to make sure you get them good and cleaned out before you put them on the engine. Otherwise you'll get the cylinder heads running a bit too hot and bad things happen after that. So that's all right. We have, uh, we'll go through all these things and decide what's bad, probably scrap what's bad. We'll keep what's good, get them all stored away. Like I say, I think this is the one that's gonna be a, a, a match to that one. So yeah, going through all the starting engine stuff, we're just about ready to start moving some of these totes out. Like this totes full of starting engine stuff. That totes full of starting engine stuff. I'm anxious to get those condensed and out of here. We're gonna get this block out of here. And I had, this crate was 1113 starting engine stuff. It's just about empty. And yeah, we I had starting engine stuff in these two cans back here, which are pretty much completely uh, assembled on the bench now. So we can actually get rid of those too. So it's gonna be really nice to be able to walk around and shop here again once I finally get through this whole tri-build. Now, the other thing I wanted to cover in the episode here, so you remember this is one of the two blocks that I had sleeved and when I uh, sent them out to be sleeved, I pulled the dipstick tubes out of them. You can see the tube is still not in this one here. And yeah, I got the tube over here with the dipstick. Yeah, there's the tube. We're gonna put that back in today. But that jogged my memory because several people have asked, how did you pull these out? Because, well, we can look at like this one over here. They're pretty much just a tight press fit down into there and there's not a lot to grab onto and you don't really at least i don't really want to just you know put a vice grip on there and just start chewing the thing up to get it out of there so big surprise i made a tool yes shocking i know so here it is it's nothing fancy i'll disassemble it real quick and show you all how it works so all right we got a long bolt we got some pipe and we have this threaded plug so we'll take the dipstick tube and just pretend like it's been in there the whole time fully installed so yeah how to get these out without damaging them so i decided the best way to do it was to get down inside the crankcase behind it with something and then like throw like a piece of pipe over the tube so it bottoms out here and then have some kind of a long threaded rod that uh, grabbed onto the piece the plug that was behind the tube and as i cranked out here it would pull everything out so I came up with this. It's just a, uh, a round plug that's threaded on the inside and it's undersized just enough to pass up through the press bore that the dipstick tube goes in. And I've got these two chunks of pipe right here. I don't remember why I had to extend it out with another like one inch long piece. I think I just cut it too short the first time. So anyway, it's, I went with it. But so this slides down around the tube and I had to notch out at the bottom here because it gets so tight up against the water jacket that there wasn't room for full wall thickness right there. So those pieces go over the tube like that. The plug, you just reach in through like, you know, the cover opening here and align it down with the base of the tube. And then we have this long bolt that's threaded smaller on this end. And we got a couple washers and like a, uh, I threaded it for a, uh, like a pusher nut up here, right beneath the head. That's where all the pulling action actually happens. So. Aligning this down in the bottom, you'd stick this down through the dipstick tube and thread it onto the plug down on the inside. So as you start turning on the nut here at the top, that pulls the long threaded bolt up through the pipe and it brings the dipstick tube with it because the plug back here is pulling on the back side of the tube and that's how you pull it right out, just like that. That way you're not damaging it or scarring it with vice strips or anything up at the top. You can pull it out, everything's nice and clean, nothing's bent, nothing's broken. That's just how it works. And to put it back in, just hammer it. I take a 3 8 bolt that I'm not particularly attached to to use as a driver, so I'm beating up the end of the bolt and not the end of the tube. And just, uh, yeah, just drive it back in place.
I just stop and check along the way. You can pay attention to the witness marks, but long story short, when you have six and a quarter inches of tube sticking out of the block, that's where you want to be. So we're pretty darn close right there. If you, uh, if you don't put it back where it was, you're going to change the oil level in the crankcase when your dipstick reads low or full. So you want to make sure you get this back to the same depth that it was before. One more tap. Six and a quarter, perfect. Put the dipstick back in its home. That's all there is to it. All right, it's sometime later, but I did get a set of cylinder heads ready for this engine here. So yeah, we have a um, pretty good set of matching petcocks in those and another set there and there for 1113. These don't have any yet, but well, I'm out of matched sets. So I'm planning on, well, this one's gonna go on probably either Seniors D2 or Seniors 212. And when we take the starting engine off of whichever one's gonna get this, I know we've got good petcocks in those. So we can transfer them there to there. And, so we're good as far as that goes. And I originally said I was gonna to wait to put this cover on this engine in the next episode. We might as well do it right now and just get it done. So I kind of want to get this one to the same stage as the other two anyhow. So I mentioned I made that 10 thousandths shim. So we're gonna go with the original two paper gaskets that I had in there. And there's our shim right there. I don't think it turned out too awfully bad. So get all three of those stacked one on the other on the other and get that all put in. I always like some tape on that key slot, protects the oil seal. And now we see how it all comes together, zero it out on the dial indicator, let's check in play. Looking like 11 thousandths. I'm happy with that. All right, with that, we've got each one of these short blocks at the same stage, so we don't have any loose ends left to tie up. That's a lot of prep work, even though it might not look like it. That's been done, and we're ready tomorrow to just start throwing all these pieces on to the engines and, man, really getting somewhere. Another thing I did off camera was I loaded all of the head studs in each one of the blocks. And that got me thinking, you know, you just sight down the line here. It looks kind of like a miniature assembly line, doesn't it? So I'm standing here for like an hour with these things, double nutting each one, running them in to get them where I wanted them, pulling the nuts off, go to the next one, the next one, the next one. I'm wondering like how many of these studs did they put in in a day on the assembly line. I'm sure that wasn't automated then. And granted, they probably had a slick tool that grabbed onto the stud and just, you know, run it in and go to the next, go to the next. But seriously, how many of these could a person just stand to just be in one spot, just threading in studs all day long? I'm sure they did other things too, but I don't know. That's just funny things I think about when I'm standing here, just, you know, do, do just getting everything done. So this is the part of it I like when all the prep work's done and you're ready just to start assembling something. That's the part that just goes so fast. It's the most enjoyable the whole lot. So anyhow, I know this was kind of an impromptu episode. It's kind of atypical when compared to what I usually do. But like I said, this is just kind of some of that behind the scenes stuff. This is stuff I usually showcase a lot over on the member side, but figured I'd throw this out for the public feed. Y'all get to get a little bit of a sampling of it too. So yeah, um, we're going to hit it again tomorrow and see if, like I said, probably two hours we'll have all those things put together in another episode on the camera. But I might go as far as trying to also get the starting engine I'm going to use for 1113 mounted on the engine. So that might take a little bit longer because I still got to get and find a good top cover and, and go through that and clean it up and gaskets and studs and all that. So it might be a little bit longer than just, you know, a couple hours, but we'll get it done. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope to see you back again.